Hello ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? It's your boy is 3 waiting you to another Anarchy and Narcissus matchup. We are covering G2 versus Fnatic, the entire series, all five games. We're loading into Champion Select right now, and it's going to be interesting to note that for game number one, G2 are on blue side, and on the red side of the rift in game number one is Fnatic. A lot to discuss here in terms of picks and bans, so let us load up straight away here and kick things off with our bans. Now, I'll only address a champion once in this video. If they come up again, I'll just skip over him and we start off this pick and ban with an Ezreal ban from G2. I'm a bit surprised by Diaz's ban coming through here. As it is targeting towards Reckless's pool, but champs like Senna, Ashen, Callista, and Jin are bigger picks that Reckless has played this split. Uh, the Caitlyn ban comes through. Solid sieging champion, there's the Callista ban alongside it by Fnatic. Ezreal obviously is a very big poke champion. Evelyn and Thresh are the other two bans from G2 here. Evelyn was used to perfection by self made in their win against Rogue that was a clean sweep very very powerful pick it clears out the jungle quickly it looks to get into the enemy jungle early and with the invisibility passive it's very easy to actually control objectives with the champion because you can get around the map place wards quite freely without having the issue of being spotted now thresh and the lucian are the last two bands in this phrase and thresh i like a lot as a band because it's a playmaker hillasang is known for playing playmakers and going aggro and I mean aggro, and as such, it's going to be interesting to see how this team of Fnatic adapt to this, because there are some big picks like, say, a Nautilus, like a Bard, picks like Pike as well that Hillasang's played, that all contain a lot of aggro in their kit. They want to be this playmaker, and that is sort of how Hillasang wants to play. Now, the last ban is that Lucian, which we're... Hovering over here, it's a big lane bully. It's a very strong pick in this current patch. You've got a lot of poke and a harassment, and it's played in the mid wave or in top technically. And as a whole, Caps has probably played this quite a bit in solo queue. And I expected it to actually come through here, and I'm actually amazed it's banned out by Fnatic. Nonetheless, we've gone through our first ban phase. Let us move into the first round of picks where we've got some interesting things to talk about. So let us get into the first round of picks here. We start with G2 going in with the Senna pick. It's kind of obvious this pick's going to come through. It's probably the strongest ADC that's usually left open now. Very powerful pick that can scale up to late game by collecting their missed stacks. And essentially harassing down champions becomes very easy because you get Glacial Augment as your ruin. You slow them down, you get more souls, you do more damage, you heal up your team with your Q very very easy to do this and realistically it's probably the best ADC available other than the Ash. The Ash is in the response pick here. I like Ash a lot because you look for picks and you can control the objectives with your Hawk Shot. That is a big tool to have in the kit. The Hawk Shot means that you're knowing where every objective is, you're able to know what you can do and as a such it's a big poke and Pick off champion with that enchanted crystal arrow. And what's more is they go with the Nautilus. They're going fully in on these picks. And I like this Nautilus pick for Hilly because he likes aggressive picks as stated before. You also have the fact that you have tons of CC. And you could essentially zero someone out from about 100% when an enchanted crystal arrow hits. A dredge line hits and a depth charge gets used and then not root happens, they're pretty much CC'd to death. Now the response though from G2 is a Braum, which I'm surprised it is the Braum. I'd prefer say something like a Leona, maybe even a hard engaged champion for this center, which allows you to combine with the CC chain. But Braum is very defensive, it's good against the Ash in terms of fact you can put up the shield, protect yourself, you also counter quite heavily Orns if there's one locked in, so realistically it is a good pick. And the last pick for G2 is actually surprising for Yankos, it's the Lilia. I didn't think he would be that much of a Lilia player because he likes to play a hard engaged champion. And Lilia, well, 
isn't too much hard engage. She has got some with the Swirl Seed into the Littening Lullaby, but as a whole, this champion is very, very AP heavy. And this usually tends towards the AD mid laner in your team's picks, so you'd expect probably some of them to be banned out by Fnatic into Phase 2. But uh, the last pick in this phase we need to discuss is the Hecarim. Kind of the response to the fold at G2 picks, you go with the horse. Hecka, high amount of engage. You have the uh, your E, your rampage through enemies. You then have the onslaught of shadows. You fear up everything, and you're very, very hard to kill. That's the big thing about Hecka is he's very bulky in terms of his build. He goes Trinity Force first. You get the phage that gives you a lot of health, and you also go into say Dead Man's Plate if you want some armor. And with the G2 squad, you're probably going to need a lot of armor because of how they've sort of set up here. Because the Lilias, the AP carry for this team, you'd expect maybe an AD carrying mid, and possibly a tankier member in the top side. But the draft's looking quite good for both teams here. They've got set goals on both sides, G2 wanting to scale up to late game and carry, and Fnatic have this pick potential comp looking to burst you down and isolate members of G2. So we get into ban phase 2, we start with the Aurelia ban from Fnatic. Makes a lot of sense because it's an AD carry that can go mid, it is rising back into the meta slightly with buffs coming through to its abilities in a couple of patches ago, and as a whole it's been on the standby, it's just outside of a pro play in terms of its pick potential and as such it makes sense obviously you get a lot of damage with that Q you can reset it works very well with this G2 lineup because you can essentially get backline Nexus quite easily onto that Ash and threaten her the only issue is that Nautilus can just CC train you to death as for the next ban from G2 it's the Shen ban makes sense to me removing a strong top laner that Whippo can play it also works well with the Hecarim. What you don't realize is Hecarim plus Shen means that the Shen, uh, Hecarim can just charge into the backline with his Onslaught of Shadows and easily get this Shen into the backline as well. And as such, this pick makes a lot of sense to be banned out. Next ban is the Camille, strong top laner, and I'd realistically expected that to actually come through instead. It gets banned out here. Camille. Makes sense to be banned, I guess, because she is rising up as a carry, and to carry top lane has ruled the thing nowadays. But, um, what I'm actually amazed is it gets banned. GX was still available. I highly doubt G2 would have banned it. And as a whole, it makes zero sense to me why it gets banned here to me. And the GP is the last ban, though, for this phase by G2. Safe Blind Pimple top that works with the Sash very well, obviously it's global on top of global. You play the map here, and what actually amazes me is I'm surprised that G2 didn't actually ban the Orianna instead of the GP. But I guess it's because they're afraid of Bwipo's GP because he can pop off on that pick as a whole. And the reason I say I'm surprised it's not the Ori ban, and I'll describe it in a couple of seconds here, it's because of a few things, and we'll get into that once we get into our last round of picks. So, let's discuss Orianna, because it's first picked here by Fnatic. Orianna plus Hecarim, plus Nautilus. Hecarim can carry in the ball into the backline, shockwave lands, that's a pretty much dead team fight and a win for Fnatic here. It's a very easy combination to actually execute with, and as a whole, makes a lot of sense for it to be locked in here by Fnatic. The response though from G2 is the Akali. Caps is getting his hands all wonder on this big pick, and I like it. It kind of hints me that G2, while having the ability to scale, will look to split push the map and force Fnatic to respond to their plays. That being said, Fnatic have a very good comp at responding to plays, but um, 
yeah, I like this pick slightly less than, say, the Zed that was hovered. Because Zed was buffed, but it hasn't made it into pro play at all since that buff. And as a pick, it makes a lot of sense with the AP carry in the jungle. But um, because of the range disadvantage and the energy kind of issues that Akali has with energy, it's still not a pick that gets seen too much anymore. Now, the last pick for G2 is the Nah. So, they're going doubling down on that split push style. Nah, very big team fighting threat if he's able to transform. When it comes down to split pushing, he likes the mini Nah. It's a combination champion that works very well with team fighting, which is kind of the style that teams want to go for nowadays because they want to control objectives. And the Nah also has split pushing aspects. The style that's fallen off quite a lot, but makes a lot of sense to go for as a whole because it's very powerful to actually execute with. That being said, the last pick that we need to discuss right now is an even more interesting one. It's the Rengar! Whippo's Rengar has been locked in. He's got a 100% win rate on this champion, and it was a shaky win against SK when he did it, but late game, it is a monster. If he gets into brushes, if he manages to stack up that bone tooth necklace, he's going to be killing people out quite quickly. And with the Hecarim, with the Oriana, it's very easy for this Ori to land that shockwave in the backline. Because guess what? Invisi Rengar means Invisi Shockwave. Invisi Shockwave means a lot of death. And I like this pick considerably. For Fnatic because it works so well, obviously pick potential is a huge thing, and this Rengar kind of works very well for it. But nonetheless, that is the two drafts gone through. Let us get into the ah and get into game number one. So let's get into our first game of action here. We see Yankos' Lilia clearing out Vision, and Fnatic know where he is, so they start to come towards him to try and kill him. Nautilus flashes forward to get the Lilia flash as well, but the, here comes the dev charge, locking her up into the Hecarim abilities and the enchanted Crystal Arrow. He's then stunned up, and then it's just an easy 3v4 for Fnatic here, as they're just clearing up the G2 members. Nah tries to go forward with a lovely Nah ultimate, but he's on his own yet again, and G2 just get punished for going in one by one in this fight. And it amazes me from watching the rest of this series how this game one fight is nothing like how G2 played in the entire series. And in the rest of the series, it's Fnatic who are doing these stupid getting caught out moments, going over-aggressive for no reason. And in that fight, G2 just went balls to the wall, and they didn't need to at all. Like, once Lily gets caught, yes, you try and save her because they'll probably go to the Baron, but you don't need to go into a fight one by one, give over kill after kill. Instead, you should realistically cut your losses which would be the best idea. Say, we'll get him at the next fight. Or not go clear out vision at top side. Maybe threaten the Drake that was being taken by Fnatic. And gone for just a straight start on the actual Baron. Instead of clearing the vision and getting caught out behind the Baron pit in Fnatic's territory. Nonetheless, that's this first game wrapped up. Let us move over to game number two, where we've got a lot of things happening and changing. Welcome to game number two, where you can see G2 are on blue, Fnatic are on red, and in the bands to kick this off, there's only one change. The Evelyn, the Ez, 
the cake, Callista, and Lucian all stay the same here. And the only change is G2 ban out the Ash, which is a big thing to say considering the fact that this pick as a whole worked quite well for Fnatic and it removes that pick comp S style Fnatic want to go towards. And considering the fact that G2 have already banned the Ezreal, Callista and Kate are all banned. It kind of puts uh, Reckless to go towards that Jin as his only option here in this phase one, considering the fact that G2 more than likely are going to pick Senna first pick. Now, we will see soon enough now what these two teams go for, and what do you know, it is the Senna first pick. We've discussed this pick uh, quite a lot, realistically, and I like this adaptation from G2 going with this. That being said, Fnatic go with the Jin. Obviously, it's the other big counter, I guess, in the bot wave to this Senna. You've got the same sort of combination that this Caitlyn Morg has with your W, but instead, in this game, it's going to be paired with the Nautilus for Hillisang yet again this game. like this pick a lot. Obviously, this is a more aggressive bot lane, I do believe, considering the fact that you can open up the curtains with Jin, fire in a load of shots, and do a bit more damage than what the Enchanted Crystal Hour can actually do. And it's actually a bit easier to go for picks than what the Ash can. Nonetheless, we see a change up from the G2 side of things as we see the set coming in for either Yankos or uh, Wonder. I like this change up because the Lilia clearly did not work in game 1 for G2. And going for something like this means that there's more early game playmaking for G2 here. Set likes to be aggressive. He likes to create plays and be an absolute monster in that jungle early game and being a very strong champion in terms of bullying the opponents. However, pairing it alongside the Leona, it becomes an unstoppable force because Leona solo flares with her ult. She Q stuns, she E's them. It's essentially Nautilus bit, but in a champion that's got far less spells that can stun. And I prefer the Leona into the Nautilus matchup rather than the Braum because you get more engage. You've got a very aggressive bot lane to match the aggression from Fnatic. Even though you do give over the Lilia to Selfmade who had a phenomenal carry performance on this champion in their series against Rogue. I like this switch up considering the fact that in game 1 his Hecker did do very well. But game two, I feel it's going to be a lot harder considering the fact it's a set in the jungle instead of the Lilia for G2. And set can realistically, if he buffers a W, he could essentially zero out a Lilia if he can pull her in and stun her up long enough. So let's jump into the second round of bands here for these two teams. We see LeBlanc and Zoe removed from the field from Fnatic here. And G2 banning out the Renekton and GP. T G2 only banned out the GP last game. And Aurelia and Camille were the bans out from Fnatic last game. And you can see, because of the fact that Lilia is now on the side of Fnatic, they drop the AD mid laner bans and instead go towards the AP mid laner bans. And LeBlanc for Caps is one of his big picks. So is his Syndra, and so is his Zoe but they can only ban two and I think the Syndra is the less threatening of the three and as a whole I think this LeBlanc and Zoe bans make a lot of sense putting caps on a weaker matchup is good considering the fact that Nemesis has been considered a weak link for his team in recent performances but G2 removing the Shen ban for and Renekton ban is actually quite big as it does mean that Essentially, there's a pretty easy blind pick Shen available to Fnatic here with very little counter other than to say play an aggressive top laner or even a tank into it just so that you can survive its lane pressure, I would say. But we'll see what's first locked here if the Fnatic and what do you know, it is the Shen. Kind of obvious it was going to come through here considering it was dropped from the bands by G2. Strong global ult that works well with this Lilia, who will be having so much move speed to get into the backside, along with the Nautilus who can essentially get there if he pulls in a backliner 
with his dredge line, but I like this pick for Fnatic. It removes that safe top lane option for G2. And as a whole, makes this matchup in the top side a living nightmare if you are a wonder. Now, the response from G2 is to go with the Orianna for caps, removing that combination from Nemesis in terms of the Lilia into with the actual uh, orb on top of it. Remove that combo is it's big, and Ori works kind of well with this set and this Jace technically, because they can still carry the orb in for themselves and do a lot of work with that shockwave. Now the last pickup is that Jace which we just mentioned, and Jace, big lane bully in terms of the fact that he looks to burst you out quite quickly and absolutely dominate a lane. As a whole, it's going to be a hard lane matchup for the Shen because Jace can essentially just shock bash you and knock you out of your W with his E and it's essentially very good at keeping back this Akali, keeping back this Lilia and this Nautilus from essentially getting into your team and I like this Jace pick a lot and it makes a lot of sense for G2 to go for it however that Akali is the last lock in for Fnatic here I like it, it works quite well with this Shen, with this Nort in terms of the fact that he, he she wants to get in the backline and burst him out However, I would say, looking at the two comps, there's not too much peel for this uh, Jin because of the fact that he's essentially going to be left alone because his team wants to get into the back side of the fight. He's going to be having to sit in the front side pretty much stranded with probably Nautilus. And even then, it's not that much protection as a whole, but, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how this game turns out as we load into the rift for game number two. Well, it's game two time. G2 are barren at the stage. Jason manages to catch out the Akali who's trying to recall. Spoiler alert, that will not work in a 1v1 because Jace is fed at this point and he can easily kill the Akali, even with missing his Q. Now we see G2 diving the base here, uh, straight after that kill, and that essentially means it's a 4v4 straight away. Set is doing work onto this Lilia as Ori flashes forward to get the kill. Set into a show-stopping shockwave executes off two members of Fnatic, and then that's the base in the eyes of G2 with Baron. Pretty easy fight for them overall, not much was wasted there, and it's just carelessness out of Fnatic once again, getting caught out and giving over kills to G2, which win games, and that's game two in a nutshell, is Fnatic playing very sloppy, not like how they played in game one. Well, Buckaroos, let us strap in for game number three. G2 once again on blue, Fnatic are on red. And what do you know, the band stay relatively the same as game number one. The only big difference is on the side of Fnatic as the removal of the LeBlanc comes through after the last game's... Well, it wasn't even used last game. It's just removed first round here by Fnatic. As a whole, it's a very powerful pick that's worked very well for Caps in the past, and essentially he's carried on it very, very well. And I like this banner as a whole because it's a target ban towards Caps, Caps being the very powerful guy on the side of G2. And as a whole, it's very easy for him to carry on this pick, and it leaves picks like Zoe, picks like Corey, them sort of champions that he's used before to essentially fall back to as his option that have been actually dwindled down. Now, looking at the first round of picks here, what do you know, it's a center for G2. They are not giving this up oh, and over to Fnatic. And this pick is responded by Fnatic with the Jin and then the Hecate. They're changing up their pick order here as the Nautilus is not going to be first round picked here. It is instead going to be left open and that pick is actually quite huge because G2 in response get the set 
and a Nautilus. They now have the playmaker on their side of the field. Instead of it being a Braum from game one, and it's not the pick that they went to in game two, which was the um, Leona. It's the Nautilus. Nautilus, high amount of CC. Love this pick as a whole. Makes a lot of sense. And realistically, will lock down this Hecarim with a bit more ease. He can also get into the Jin's face quite easily when he plants himself with the curtain call. But we look at the last response for Fnatic in this game's first round of picks. It's the Thresh. It's made itself through the pick ban phase here. I like it. It's a playmaker. Death sentences will be flying across the map. It's sort of a Hillisang special. You expect him to carry on this sort of pick. I like it. You also allow Jin some chance of getting away from fights and planting himself in place with that curtain call. So giving him this powerful ultimate makes a lot of sense to me and realistically will work exceptionally well for the Fnatic lineup. So we get into our second ban phase. Zoe once again returns to the bands here for Fnatic. G2 respond with the Shen and Renekton. And the Camille also returns to the bands from Fnatic here. So they've blended in their bands from previous games here. I like it, makes a lot of sense. Zoe, one of Caps' big picks. Still leaves open though the Ori, the Syndra. Picks that he has played this split and done phenomenally on. There's also the Akali which is open and an Azir. But it's going to be interesting to see what these teams go towards in terms of mid lane champs as for top lane there's quite a few less options that are safe probably expecting maybe an Orn, Cho'Gath if you're Bwipo, Urgot, Sion still big picks available that teams have gone towards this uh, playoffs so these bands have removed some of the big OPs but you who knows it's gonna be interesting to see what happens as we move into our second pick phase. So, last round of picks, we start off with the Oriana pick up here for Fnatic. Makes a lot of sense considering it worked so well for G2 when they got it into their hands. So, it's nice to have it alongside a Hecarim who will be trying to access the backline once again. G2's response is GP and the Azir, which is the first time I do believe we're seeing Azir in the series. Very powerful pick in terms of the sweep and showstopper combination. You essentially push them back into a showstopper, essentially stunning them in place. So if one comes one way, the other comes the other way. The Emperor's divide into showstopper just keeps them in place. And it's a very powerful combo that does a lot of damage. And I love this combo that's being drafted by G2 because that GP obviously will have global pressure on the map and it's going to be hard for Fnatic to match and it's a very powerful burst heavy champion that being said it does limit G2's damage to solely AD until you have the Azir in your lineup which I do think is a bit of an issue as we look at the Fnatic side they draft in the Yawn for the last pick of this game Big boy Orni in the top laney is very powerful in terms of scaling up for late game. And you look at the champions that are on Fnatic side. You have a Hecarim who will go Trinity Force. IE on Jin. Um, Redemption maybe on Thresh. Death Cap on Ori. All big ornament items that can be transformed by this one makes it very useful. Obviously with Call of Forge God as well as his ultimate. You've got a lot of lockup here for this Fnatic side that can combo in with each other. So you can onslaught of shadows into a shockwave. You can curtain call into the Forge God, a uh, call of Forge God. You can even use the box to sh slow people down for the curtain call. But who cares? This is a big team fight heavy team comp Fnatic's drafted, and G2 have drafted. Sort of a similar style to Fnatic, but as a whole, the two drafts mesh quite differently, and I'm looking forward to this game. Now, there's only one thing left to do, other than to say, 
let us get into game number three, where we'll see someone take an advantage in this series. <laughs> gentlemen to straight pulling the triggers so as you can see here wonder walks straight past hillasang who's hiding in the brush who was trying to reset and g2 clearing out some vision in the brush here they know that nautilus is there fanatic so they go directly on top of the center and try to engage on her but a lovely emperor's divide pushes Hecarim underneath the G2 turret forcing the first kill of the fight for G2 and a bit of recklessness out of self-made in this game is kind of the importance of this play and that is kind of where this game went out of the hands of Fnatic and whenever Fnatic in the series look to go aggressive for no apparent reason like we're going to see here as the set just gets a lovely face breaker into showstopper to essentially mean that Ori's dead as well and the turret goes it essentially means that G2 play this map with a lot more ease whereas Fnatic are just playing over aggressive like it's like all of them have taken the hillasang pill and just wanted to go crazy and engage into g2 and it doesn't work like that when you're split your main engaged champion who's in the top lane hiding from wonder is not in the fight so you have no real engage other than an onslaught of shadows over a wall to your death. The Jin tries to open up the curtains, but he cannot keep them open long enough because Nautilus is coming directly for its throat. And as such, G2 just win that fight with ease because of self-made going suicidal, I guess is the best way to put it. Anyway, that is game number two broken down. Let's have a look-see at the next game. Buckle your seats and get yourselves ready, it's game number four and this thing's getting crazy. So, let's take a look see at the drafts here, and what do you know, there is a no changes realistically towards the bands, other than G2, instead of removing the ash, they remove the thrash. That is a big ban for them because, obviously, Hilly's thrash in game number three absolutely popped off and it was a phenomenal pick. The other band comes out from Fnatic is the Yumi. Don't know why. Makes zero sense. I mean, they probably would could see G2 switching over to an Ezreal. But even then, it's not that big of a pick considering the fact that G2 have actually dropped the Ezreal band because they've actually gone for two support bands here. The Nort as well. I didn't actually spot that in when I first was discussing it. So I guess that's why they banned the Yumi, because they don't want that phenomenal combo going over to G2. Anyway, first round of picks, it's the Ash this time going over to G2, they're switching it up. They're going for this pick instead of the Senna that they've relied on for the past few games. Obviously they don't think it's working out for them, so they're realistically switching it up. Go for a bit more of a pick comp, and realistically try and play through that style. However, Reckless gets his hands on the center for this game, alongside the Hecarim once again returning over to the Fnatic uh, jungle. This is big. I like this style because Hecarim plus Senna means a lot more sustain for the Hecarim, with the Dawning Shadow Ultimate going over the top of the Hecarim's uh, Onslaught of Shadows. It's very easy for this uh, combination to do something and be very, very impactful for the game. G2 side of things though is the set returning to the field for them, looking to play early and shut down this Hecarim, who will probably struggle with the early game clear in comparison to a set. And what do you know, it's Caps' LeBlanc. First time this series it's coming out and first time it may be getting a win. It's a big pick for the camps because it can just burst out targets. It's very good into Senna because Senna is a very immobile carry because she has to plant her health down 
to auto, she can essentially be easily bursted down and out by a double distorting LeBlanc who lands her chains and kills you off quite quickly. Big pick as a whole and I love it for G2, though it does mean that the Leona is going over to Hillisang. His champ pool got reduced so much in this game and he still finds Fanny he still manages to pick up a aggressive support like this Leona. A lot of CC in this kit. It matches probably the same amount of CC as Nautilus has. And as such, I love this pick a lot. Makes a lot of sense as well. And as such, we're going to see a very powerful bot lane for Fnatic here. Because they can still technically go for picks themselves with that Leona Solar Flare. And it will work exceptionally well for them. Now we're getting to the second round of bands, and we already see bands towards the bot lane from Fnatic as they remove out one of the big supports that can deal with the Leona. It's the Tom Kench. Remove that champion that can save the Ash, reposition her, and allow her to go and rattle down damage onto a Leona who essentially does have one way damage essentially she has no way of really peeling other than solar flaring and then running even then she's not the quickest of runners and will be chased down quite quickly the other bands from g2 is the gp and the renekton obviously targeting out whippo's safe top lane picks forcing him onto something that isn't the best for him but there is still technically the camille that is still open there's still the Yawn that he used last game that was a win for him. And there's still his Cho that he loves so much that goes Glacial Augment. As for the last man from Fnatic side of things, the Morgana. Makes a lot of sense with an Ash because you can essentially use it to protect yourself from the Solar Flare ult. Protect it from the Onslaught of Shadows. And considering the lockdown this champion has, I'm amazed it doesn't get banned out more. and Or picked more because of the amount of CC in this kit. As a whole, like that ban a lot, though it does mean that there is still other options, like say a Blitzcrank. I wouldn't say Rakan because Leona absolutely shreds Rakan. But uh, there's still champs like that that can work and do a lot of work for G2. So let's get into our last round of picks here. We start with the Camille pickup for Fnatic very aggressive top laner. I'm actually surprised Jax was not banned or even the Shen here by Fnatic but obviously it's a big pick here to Camille because she can hookshot, lock you up and with the Leona that's a lot of CC in the kit of Fnatic and realistically they're gonna be able to lock you up and do so much work in team fights. And the response from G2 though is gonna be a big one. It's the Tarek first round for this second phase. It's a big pick for G2 because it works so well at nullifying damage. If you're going for a mass amount of CC to chain lock you down and kill him off that quick, Tarek does wonders against it because you can just activate his ult. There you go. Nullify the damage on a lot of team members and work your way through a fight like that. I like this a lot, the Cosmic Radiance is a phenomenal tool, and with a Ash it's very easy to also lock up a Leona because you can use your Dazzling Gleam, your E, to essentially just stop the Leona who has essentially a straightforward engage, you just put that directly in front of you, Leona gets hit by the stun before she's able to actually do any damage, and as such essentially she gets countered quite hard by this big pickup for our G2 and the last picks that we can discuss here the Shen big global ult champ that does a lot of work in taunting up targets and being a threat across the map it's a big champ in terms of team fights as well and with G2's lineup I guess with the set more than anything is you can combo the Stand United or and the Le LeBlanc actually as well you can combo in the Stand United with them champions engages get into the backline quite quickly and easily and kill off the targets just like that and as such I like this pick a lot especially going into a Cassadin on the side of Fnatic and I watched this game live I knew what was going to be coming up in Twitch chat it was the Monka S timers 
re waiting for level 16. Yeah. Kassadin realistically only becomes a champion past level 16. And teams think that this is a good champion to be playing in pro. Because you cannot be punished before level 16, right? Wrong. This champ gets absolutely destroyed early game. And that's what we're expecting here if it's able to get past level 16. I tweeted out saying, I don't think it'll barely reach level 16. And it didn't. But we'll get into the player in a few seconds here as we load up into game number four. These two teams looking to either continue the series if you're G2 or win it out right here if you're Fnatic. So welcome to game number four. We start this thing off with Hecarim spotting a wall placed and he's like, okay, I can go over this wall and engage. So he uses the Onslaught of Shadows and looks to immediately burst out the Ash. She gets Stand United and Cosmic Radiance, making her invulnerable and thus he is dead because he's on his lonesome in the G2 backline. Pretty easy kill. Then it's Leona trying to protect her team. She uses a Soul Flare onto two as well as a Xerath Blade and gets isolated and killed off. Basically, two easy picks off in this fight for G2 means that they can push out, get this tier 2 turret in the bot wave, and then possibly turn to the Baron here and win game number 4 off of a pretty weird play from Fnatic overall because you've got a Hecarim. Just because you can dive into the back line doesn't mean you should, and you had no real idea of which G2 members were there. Makes zero sense to me why you would go in because you see a ward placed down. Yet it makes little sense to none. Nonetheless, that is the play for game number four. Let us jump into game number five, where we should hope to see something a bit more logical. Welcome to game 5, the sides have not changed at all this series and hardly have the bans. G2 return to banning out the Evelyn and the Nautilus like they did in game number 4 and Fnatic ban out the Cape, the Callista and the Yumi once again obviously because G2 do not ban the Ezreal. The last ban though for G2 is banning out the Hecarim. The big pick that Fnatic have been rolling through this series with has actually finally been banned out and it's a big ban to say the least. That being said, there are some options still available to Fnatic that they've used before, like that Lilia, who is looming ever so brightly in the actual pick phase as we get into them. We start with the Ash pickup for G2, obviously they just won with this pick. What do you know you expect the response from Fnatic to be? The center. No other response there other than that. And yeah, it is. But here's the change up. Instead of going for what they went with in the last game in that Leona, they go for the Thresh. It's been allowed back to Hillisang after it being banned out last game. This game, obviously, with the switch up to the Hecarim, is a big change up here. Getting this center and thresh bot lane going it's gonna be very very powerful as a whole and you cannot realistically pick Tarek once again if you're g2 because it doesn't work the same as what leona does nonetheless we see the set and leblanc back in g2's hands again for this game i like this combo it worked phenomenally well in game four and hopefully in game five there'll be that very very powerful combination showing through once again. That being said, the last pickup for this phase has actually been a surprise. It's the Lucian that hasn't been seen or heard of since about game one, I do believe. Anyway, Lucian, big pick here that's probably going into Nemesis' hands. He played this phenomenally in the first game. It's a super duper strong pick. Very, very big lane bully and it's going to be very strong, I feel, into this LeBlanc because it can just tear her to pieces during the early phase of the game before she even gets her to store or her ultimate. It's going to be a hard lane for the LeBlanc to actually stay in 
and hopefully she'll be looking to make roams. Now, second round of bands, we start with a Blitzcrank band from Fnatic. Actually, surprises me that they go for the Blitz here as a band, because realistically, Blitz versus Thresh and Senna, there's a lot of range on the side of Fnatic in that bot side, so Blitz isn't too big, and with the mobility evolution, I don't think this would have been an option that G2 would have gone for. That being said, the Lilia and the Karthus are the return bands from G2. Big bands, in my opinion, because Lilia obviously would have been a pick self-made would have tended towards, and with that being the Lucian lock-in for Fnatic, they realistically do need an AP jungler, or even an AP top laner. That being said, there is very little AP top laners other than, say, a Nico, a Kali maybe, or something along those lines. Diana, technically, but I don't think that would be the option. You've got other options in the jungle, like the Karthus, which was banned out, like the Lilia that was banned out. The Elise and the Gragas are still open. They're the options I'd expect Fnatic to go towards, especially now that they've banned out the Morgana, which obviously is a big engaged champion for G2 on the bot side, which they banned out in game last game, I do believe. Anyway, Fnatic's first pick of this second pick phase is a big one. It's the Gragas. A lot of engage on this champ. It works so well into a set because you can just, just drop your cask on him as he's coming into your backline, and there you go, he's no longer in your backline. You've got a very easy execute onto a lot of this squad that G2 have essentially drafted. And what actually surprises me, that G2 go for the Braum here, instead of the Tom Kench. I would have preferred the Tom Kench overall, because it works so well in repositioning and protecting this Ash, rather than putting up a shield to essentially stop some of the damage. I prefer Tom Kench because he's also got a semi-global in his kit and would essentially affect the map that way. Now, G2 opt into the Orn here instead of the Shen that they've gone to in the past few games, which is a big surprise in my opinion because there was also GP available, which Fnatic pick up here. But I would have expected the GP or even a Shen first pick if one well, first pick of a top laner for G2, and it would have made a bit more sense than the Orn, though Orn provides a bit more scaling, and it's very, very useful in kind of negating some of the effectiveness that Fnatic would have gone for. And realistically, I'm not too fussed about it if it's that or say that Shen or even the GP that Fnatic get. But the drafts have come through for our fifth and final game. A lot of the stakes for these two teams as it won advances to the grand finals going into the upper bracket of Worlds. The other advances into the semi-final matchup versus Rogue. Who will win this best of five? It all comes down to this. Let's get into this game. Well, if you've seen this game before, you probably knew this team fight would be what we're looking at. Welcome to Fnatic's two-man base defense versus four of G2's members. And before we look at any action, we need to have a look at who is technically alive for both teams. Now, on G2's side of things, it's the Orn, it's the Ash, the Braum, and the LeBlanc. And on Fnatic's side, it's the Lucian and the Senna. Now you're probably wondering, what's the importance of these two these two members of Fnatic being alive versus these four? Well, these are the two carries for Fnatic. They're the ones that have all the damage and all of the ability to keep their base alive and stop G2 from ending this game. So we begin this play with G2 destroying the inhibitor turret and inhibitor with Orn joining the fray after TPing back. Senna and Lucian are standing on the Nexus turrets 
and now Braum and Orn step forward to protect the carries of G2 as they destroy the base. Lucian gets chunked down really low from the LeBlanc and is forced to cool down the Orn, who just gets absolutely chunked and destroyed before he's able to realistically pump out any damage or even have a chance to respond to anything really. And that forces G2 back and they have to reset. And usually you would say, well, stay and fight. You have no cooldowns other than the LeBlanc ult. You could essentially outfight these two major champions. But you have to then realize all of Fnatic are respawning at this moment. And G2 cannot stay and fight. So they essentially have to fall back, reset, buy up everything. But here's the issue for them. Baron's alive. And so is the Ocean Drake, which would be soul for either team in 30 seconds. And the resets take about 20 seconds. Obviously, that involves going back to base, which is about 7 to 10 seconds recalling. You also have to find a safe location to do that. You then buy up your items because G2 did not reset before making this play. So they have a bit of cash in their back pockets here. And that essentially means that they can buy the items they need. That will take about 10 seconds. They then have to get it back onto the map and go towards the pit. Which, in time of that happening, Fnatic probably would have taken the objective. So, realistically, G2 should have, essentially, have, instead of gone straight to the base of Fnatic and looked to end, they should have played it safe and gone and took a Baron and went on that route because that would have meant that they could have played this fight a whole lot better and essentially kept themselves alive in this game which they eventually end up losing and as such it's a shame that G2 went out in this fashion considering the fact that they could have won this series in game 4 but they threw their third game away nonetheless that's going to be it for this video if you enjoyed it, leave a like down below. Subscribe when you're out here if you want to, and I will see you guys later. Peace out.